Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here bringing us a video here today, bringing us an Illustrator slash Photoshop tutorial today. Just gonna make your very own simple completed Twitch event. So our Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, gaming, freaking like Facebook, there's like so very many now. But anyway, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do a, uh, I guess a logo tutorial. And I can't really give you guys that many logo tutorials because I have just, there's no other way to kind of give you guys the knowledge that you guys just need to have. You have to have some kind of inspiration. You have to have some kind of experience, visual experience, visual training, things like that to kind of pick up different cues and things that you like in logos. Those things I really cannot teach. It all just comes with you guys, of course, practicing and practicing and practicing. However, I can give you guys more ideas of course how to construct them from a standpoint where you actually don't have an idea, right? Something that you don't have, you know, on paper and that you don't have an idea of like at all, right? So of course, there's more people who are kind of like beginners in Photoshop and Illustrator. So regardless, it should hopefully help out someone out there. If it's kind of like, I guess, revamping your, if it looks something like kind of like a, like you have like a space background with like sparkles and it says like stream offline, I'm talking to you. No, no offense, but I'm talking to you. Anyway, of course, two likes on the video is a stick it down below as always. And uh, mostly being like a color palette or like an idea, inspiration, mood board for you guys to kind of open up and kind of like figure out. And uh, yeah, let's go get this thing going. Let's just, let's just go. All right, guys, let's go get this thing going right here, right now. So the first half of the video, of course, is me focusing on the actual logo design portion. So I want to give you guys some really cool apps or like websites, I guess you would say as well, that actually might help you guys when it comes to logo designs. So of course, this video is not sponsored at all, by the way. So all these different little websites or whatever, it's just me just kind of giving you guys some ideas. Now, it's called blobmaker.app. So for some reason, when you, of course, put your colors up, you put the contrast up and the complexity up, you guys just basically refresh. Now let's just pretend that our name is like alpha and we're just saying you're myself or we're just looking for the letter A, right? We want to make a letter A logo. And now for the end of this video, for me personally, I'm going to be using a different uh, technique, which is using like a font and then of course putting an illustrator and like making it my own. Now. Let's say you go back to the blob stuff, right? Now, if you guys just kind of use a light shot or print screen program, by the way, you guys just basically draw on actually your screen and you guys just kind of like draw these different letters that you guys see also using the shape. It's a very cool way to kind of get ideas flowing that might actually not come to you naturally or organically, right? But if you guys look at these really cool, fun, organic shapes, they can kind of like, I guess you would say like almost like kind of like, you know, like, like jog some memory, jog some kind of ideas through your brain that kind of just helps. Right. So for some, it's almost like, like you're going through therapy. Like, what do you see? Like, honestly, just give it a shot. You might actually not know how helpful it might be or just how obsolete, just obsolete it might be. I have no idea. I want to know if it works for you guys. It worked for me a couple of times in the past. I have no idea if it's going to work for you, but hopefully it probably does. Right. Let's just, let's just hope. Okay. All right, guys, let's go ahead and basically say that if like blob making is just not for you, okay, that's okay. If you guys can't look at random shapes and just magically come with the logo, that's fine. There's this thing called fonts. Now, a lot of you guys already know, like fonts are a really, really cool way uh, that logo designers, typefaces, whatever, that they, they create actual uh, logos for their clients, stuff like that. And of course, use the actual logos for um, like brand guideline reasoning where they want to use a, a specific font to kind of nail down their vibe of their actual company. Now, of course, you guys go uh, on devon.com, right? Now, the categories on the top, I'm going to go to random category. We're going to go to techno. We're going to go to various for whatever reason, okay? Oh, hey, that's my font. Oh, dude, I was... I. I meant to go ran. I didn't mean to go to my top three most downloaded font for the past nine months. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm kidding. Okay, but regardless, when you guys find a topic that you guys like, whether it's like a Chinese character or some like script kind of thing, when you guys go to it, which I would suggest go to Various, by the way, it's a really cool or under techno Various has these really cool like fun fonts. I feel like you guys would like, but not because it's mine. Um my category but what i would like you to do is go to more options go to 100 percent free and then in the preview just type in the letter that you guys of course are going to be using for your logo right so for me i, ha I put an a because we said we're pretty we're like, like kind of like just imagine that our, our name is alpha and we want a letter a we we'll press submit <laughs> excuse me right now oh there's my logo <laughs> fun again um seriously though when you guys actually scroll through here most of the times they're 100 free now of course you want to still ask honestly or do a little bit of research to make sure it's actually 100 free because there's always little some simple little things that you just sometimes you just can't end up doing like my fun if you guys were to use it um you guys can use it whatever way you're gonna want to use it right i'm not gonna go to you guys but you cannot use it for that i know like I, literally emails from over 100 people were like hey i want to use it for my logo that's perfectly fine just make sure you guys ask sometimes uh not sometimes but ask majority of the times if you guys know for sure if it's 100 free if you guys are not using the font.com or whatever right so if you guys scroll through i want to go ahead and say it like i saw a font that i really liked which was infinite justice right for me i was like that is a pretty cool font it already has an a that i really really like now you just simply download it, right? You guys get it downloaded. And I'm going to move it into Illustrator, but 
for whatever reason, if you guys don't like this one, of course, like I said before, go to whatever you guys want to do, like a Chinese character, all these uh, settings are going to uh, stay the same, right? 100% free is still checked, like Gang of Three, a really cool font as well, by the way. And of course, you can use this now as like logo inspiration. So let's just go ahead and like take our font that we really liked and put it into Illustrator and make it a little more ours, right? All right, guys, so we're basically in Illustrator now. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer, just like so, right? Now I'm going to go to my text tool, which is located right over just right here. Okay, I'm gonna make my uh, size about 190 and I'm also gonna type in the font that I of course now downloaded that you guys got from the font. And now you can just simply click. All right, I'm gonna press my A that I had. I'm gonna use a capital A, not the lowercase A, by the way. Right, I'm gonna use the, uh, the selection tool. I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift, select the corner and make it a little more bigger for my actual working size. Now, Illustrator is a way to go when it comes to logo design. Just so you guys know, if it's if it's absolutely do or die, you guys have no money for like Photoshop and Illustrator together. If you guys want to have like the creative suit, okay, I would still suggest you guys, of course, try to get Illustrator for logo designing. If you guys can't, okay, but if you guys could, please do so. It makes it way way easier for vector program. Vector program means Photoshop. Photoshop can be any size that it wants to be, and that vector file that you guys put in from Illustrator will always be the crispest quality possible. It'll also be rasterized, uh, not rasterized, it'll also be vectorized, which can be very, very easy to edit. Really, really just way better, just so you guys know, okay, if you guys do not know already, right? So, now that you guys have that, of course, typed in, you guys use the actual uh, selection tool here. You click on it, you guys go to Object, expand make sure you expand it with object on as well as fill on you press ok now it basically takes that uh, the i guess the text that you guys had the, that text format and now makes it into a shape right so now if you guys get off the direct selection tool uh, or the selection tool and use the direct selection tool which is a and your keyboard for the shortcut you can now click on individual sh uh i guess points that actually created and made up the actual font right so with this now you guys can basically kind of say hey I don't like how this was like that, right? Now this this is where you guys can uh, get your own input. Let's just say your own you're your own client right now. You're just saying, okay, now I don't like this. So how do I fix it? I'm gonna say I don't like how big this indention is. So I can click on this actual little anchor point here. Hold Shift to keep it on a straight line and move it towards the left. We'll click on it first. Hold Shift and make sure you move it to the left. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm gonna say, hey, move it in a little bit more. Let's also say I don't like how this is straight. I want to have it be on a more of a slant. I can highlight these shapes as well or highlight these points as well. And move this up so that it goes on a slant right now i can also say i don't like how thick this is from here to here i'll click on the, or hover over this point hold shift hover over this point and i'll go ahead and move it in just like so while holding shift as well and i'll just do this as well again right i can just kind of make my better my my better looking logo okay now i can say hey i want it i want it to be really weird i want this side to be a little bit longer than the other side so i'm gonna move this in okay just kind of add some i don't know whatever i want to add right let's just say i want to move this like down now Okay, it's almost like a four, so I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna turn it. And I'm gonna say to myself, this logo right here, this is this is the logo that I wanted, right? This is gonna be uh, good enough for me, right? To kind of be like, okay, I wanna move forward now. So what I would suggest you guys to do now is find your color scheme, and the way I would do that is use something like Ninja Palette or whatever it's called. I'll put these in the description down below, by the way. Um, Ninja Palette or Coolor is another cool one. So if I wanna kinda introduce you guys to that, if you guys have never seen it, this is what it is. All right, guys, now that I'm in the actual site called Colors, like I was saying before, if you guys actually know about it at all, if you guys were to be on the site, okay, right, and press spacebar, it'll basically change colors, of course, get rendered different colors, no matter what. Now, let's just say if you guys want to lock a color, you can just basically uh, click the actual lock button. If you press spacebar, that will now see the same, very sort of like self-explanatory. But what I'd like for you guys to do is on the first one, make the brightness 100%, make the saturation all the way to the left, and this is going to be your first color, okay, color, shade, whatever you want to call it, right? So in total, you guys want to basically have four different colors, okay? One's going to be white, which is going to be, already, of course, already given to you. Very simple, right? The second one's going to be a, basically a black that has a little bit of a hue color in there. So what I mean by that is basically a very dark color that also has a little bit of a color in there. So if you guys were to look at my example for my actual logo over here um, for this one, right? At first glance, you might say to yourself, that's about, it's black, right? But if I were to zoom in, you guys will start to notice that that is definitely not black, but maybe, of course, in the render. But if I actually put a black, let's put a black next to it so you guys can definitely see right this is black okay on the outside is a nice little bluish color so it kind of helps guy uh, help you guys out when it comes to like color skin of course separate yourself from people just using pure black now on this point here right if you guys want to do that go to adjust okay i'm gonna put this in full screen if you guys want to adjust you guys want to go to basically brightness put it at like like five put your saturation at like 30 okay now if i were to move the hue bar you guys should be able to see in the background over here like this is like almost like a almost like a brownish this guy's kind of gets you out of yellow green you see a little bit of a blue kind of like switching through like purple i'm not sure if it's in the render of this video that you guys will be able to see how clearly it's changing colors but of course when you guys do it on yourselves on your own you guys will see but 
basically move this cue bar until you find a color that you guys really like. I like this little smoky black right here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, lock it. Now for the third color here, you guys are gonna be able to get a color that's gonna be almost like your primary color for your actual logo design. Okay, so I'm gonna say, which one do I like? That orange is not bad at all. The green was pretty cool. This is actually really unique right here. I like this little green here. I'm gonna lock that one right here. I like that green. So the actual last one here, I'm gonna drag this one over here. So you have this white, this nice little black, like bluish color with green. The last color basically be a nice little complementary color to the actual, I guess you say the, the stream revamp side, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, like this charcoal, black charcoal is actually pretty cool. I'm gonna lock that. I like these four colors. So what I would like to do is I would like to use print screen or the actual uh, light shot program that I use. Like take it, if I just click it, make sure I get the actual hex codes in there. Now, if you guys want to, I'm gonna press control C by the way to actually copy it, right? If you guys want to, you guys should click on this and just control C this actual hex code and put it into the programs that you guys wanna use the colors for. But for me, I like to kind of make it more streamlined for myself and just say, hey, once I have the actual color, right? I'll put it in a layer, post, uh, paste it in there, right? Right, press control V, put it in here. Now I'll just lock this layer down, okay? And I'll go to my logo and I can actually get started now. So now with this, I'm gonna go ahead and make a duplicate of my logo by simply holding Alt, dragging it below the layer. You guys will see the little hand turns to a plus button, which means we made a duplicate. Now you have two of the same logos. So the first one here, you guys will actually make it white. So that first primary color, that fill, make it white. Now on the one below it, I'm gonna turn off this fill color and turn on the stroke color. So the first one on the top or in the foreground section is your fill color. The one on the back side is the stroke color. It's a little bit different from Photoshop. You guys are not used to it. Very, very simple, really, honestly, right? So the back one is the stroke color, right? You guys will see if you guys hover over, it says stroke. You guys will basically press the color option to turn on the color option, okay? Now, if it goes to window, you guys go to uh, stroke here. It'll open up that tab. Now, align stroke, you're gonna make sure it's on the outside, which is the last one. Okay, if you guys hold shift and go to the weight, if you guys just put this up, you guys will see it, it goes up by weights by 10 intervals, which makes it very, very easy for you guys. You have to just basically click like 500 times. That was my phone, sorry, by the way. Let's turn that on mute. Okay, right, you have to click like 500 million times, hold shift, just do it three times, right? So 30% or 30 points is pretty good for me. Now for this now, I'm gonna say, I don't want pure black, I want this color right here. So the way I get it, double click on it, and just type it in, 080A0C. Press OK or Enter, just like so. Now it's gonna be the same color. And like I said before though, it's not pure black. It's a nice sort of smoky black is what it calls, which is pretty cool. It has like a cool name for them all, right? What if I just go over here again, right? Make a new layer, make a pure black for you guys just so you see that it's not actually pure black, right? It just makes it, oops, let's turn this off, right? That's pure black and that's our color. So now you guys can see, if I just make another logo copy for this one, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just press this again. This selects the actual layer, it's a target layer. If you guys do not do the target layers, if you guys are not selecting the layer itself and you guys are changing stroke options like I'm about to do right now, it won't actually change anything. So just keep that in mind, right? I'm gonna hold shift, press it twice again. It's gonna make the stroke basically bigger for me right now, but I didn't change the color yet until I do that right now. So just click over here, okay? Change the color to 95C623, press okay. Right, and now I have this little color scheme right here. I'll turn this off as well if I wanted to. Okay, so that is basically how I create a very, very simple logo for you guys by using a, uh, an actual little font. And of course, getting the color scheme by just using something like a, like a palette ninja or a colors or coolors, whatever the sites are called, right? And now that this is done, I can just literally simply just take this actually, let's turn this off for a second. I can really just hover over this entire thing, right? By clicking on it, press V on my keyboard, take it and just drag it into Photoshop and just drop it in there. Right now, this is a nice little vector. Have my little A in here, and we're pretty much set to go. So let's go ahead and just now actually design with this little color scheme that we actually made from the actual color palette, okay? All right, guys, so now that we're inside Photoshop, we're all good to go. Our logo's in here. I also put my swatches in here as well. I just took the same ones from Illustrator, put them inside my Photoshop. I'm gonna basically follow the same as that layout as this. I think it's a really cool layout for simply being it's a very clean one, by the way. It also highlights the logo that you just made. It also highlights a color scheme that you guys just picked out as well. So on the logo here, I'm just gonna press Control T to free transform, hold Alt Shift, hold the corner here and just drag my mouse towards the left-hand side. It'll make it nice and small for us. Now I'm gonna choose a really good size, just kind of move it off to the left-hand side, right? Now I'm gonna make a new layer right below the logo. So I'm gonna click on my background here, make a new layer, just like so, layer one, right? Take my marquee tool, right side marquee tool, which is a second layer in your toolbox. Click on the left-hand side outside of the canvas, and then I'm gonna drag towards the right. 
I'm gonna give myself like a little bit of a space so you can see how much space is around here. I'm gonna do, this, I'm gonna do myself a favor, excuse me, and do the same thing on the right hand side here. So give myself just about that same amount of space that I left off to the left hand side. So once I actually let go, you have the market selection. Now, if you guys do not know, your foreground color is the one on the left hand side, your background color is the one on the right hand side. So quick fill your foreground color, which I mean by quick fill is a shortcut. So to quickly fill it in is alt backspace for the foreground color, which is the one to the left, like I said before. And if you want to fill in the background color, it's control backspace. Okay. So I want to change my foreground color, as you can see right here, to the one that's the darkest color right here, that darkest color in our palette, that swatch color, which is that nice little sort of like bluish black, right? Press OK. Now I can press Alt backspace it'll quick fill that in just for us press Control d to deselect and we're good to go now if you don't want to use any quick fill things or whatever when you have this market selection right here on your new low uh, on your new layer just use the same tool that you guys did to make it to right click it fill drop down color and then choose this color right here press ok press ok again same exact thing just so you guys know right so i'm gonna press Control d to deselect so this is our now our black or not our black but our bluish black or whatever right so i'm gonna do now is i hold alt and I'm going to select the actual layer and drag it below it, just like Illustrator, if I like let go now of my left click, right? And I make a copy for me, just like so. So now with this copy, this will be the green copy. We're going to double click on this one, go to Color Overlay, go to over here to our little color picker, and we're going to choose our green, press OK, press OK again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my movement tool, okay? Move it over to the right hand side, almost like a little bit, give myself like almost like a little margin of like a book and give myself just a little bit of space to kind of like peek that color in there. Looks pretty good. Now I'm also going to put in our stream. Oops. I don't know why that happens sometimes. I'm, I, it's been happening a little bit lately. It's just like a weird, like a, like a key stuck. I think it's a key stuck. It totally is a key stuck. I think it's Q. It has to be Q. Please don't be stuck. That's so weird. Can you just like let me live my life? How? I just want to write a word. Which key is stuck? What is this? You weirdo. Why are you? I'm just not paying attention. Cool. So now our text is there. Uh, see, everyone, I just, I don't know everything sometimes. Okay, stream. We're going to put the word offline. Now, this is a card. You can put stream starting. This can be like your intermission, whatever it happens to be. We're going to make the word offline just a little bit more bigger. I'm also going to use the font uh, Gotham Narrow as well as this one right here to be Gotham Narrow. Right, make my stream a little more small than the word offline. Something like that. Okay, now it looks pretty good so far, nice and clean. Okay, now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna choose my fourth color, which is that gray that we haven't used yet, but I'm gonna take a copy of this. I can just press Alt, Shift, select the green, just like so it's selected, right? And just drag it over to the right. Or click on the actual layer itself and press Control J and move it over manually, okay? So this is our green and now this is gonna be our gray. Right, so now this color overlay, I'll go to my color overlay, go to my color picker, put my gray in there, press OK, excuse me, press OK again. And now I have this little gray in here as well. Now I'm gonna make sure I have is my offline, is it gonna be the color of this same exact black that we're using, or not the black, like I said, but the blackish blue color, okay? And then the word stream will be our secondary color, which is that green. Now, in some cases, you might find yourself that your fourth color you guys chose is not going to work out. Usually, your first three colors are always going to work out no matter what, um, but the fourth color might not work out all the time, and I'm going to say to myself right now, I'm going to suggest to me that it's the green or the gray and the green don't quite look too good together. Um, it doesn't really stand out. It doesn't really highlight anything. Um, be sure to follow. Oops. Be sure to follow to know when I go live is a pretty good saying to say, right? But you can see it's not quite looking it just there's something off if nothing feels off to you that's fine but for me right now for myself i think it feels off i'm gonna say maybe like follow to know when i go live so it's not so long if i don't know when i go live sure or or follow to stay connected sure right so I'm gonna say whenever word you want to put as when you guys put subtext, what they call it subtext, which is basically like a nice little text that you can just put in there to actually just kind of have to read later per se, right? Hover over the word like "stay connected" or something like that catches people's eyes that you want you want them to read first and make that the secondary color, okay? So now with this, I'm gonna take this, move this over. So I'm gonna do. If you guys can't see, I'm holding the, the I'm using the movement tool. I'm holding control. I'm selecting and I'm moving selecting moving selecting moving if you guys don't have that feature enabled it's because you don't have the word layer selected you have the word group selected by default i believe it's group selected right make sure it's layer that's selected under the movement tool right just like so 
Okay, so you can hold control and select things and you can see it's selecting them on the right hand side here No matter what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna select my background my gray I'm gonna hold shift select my green right hold shift again select my black over here, right? Press control T To free transform select the corner right here hold shift Right if you guys don't know if you hold shift you guys can see on the right hand side right above my actual mouse Right, you can see it's rotating by 15 intervals. So I'm gonna basically hold shift, rotate it once by 15. Right, I can let go now. Hold Alt, select the middle, and just drag it up, just like so. Press OK. Now it gives myself a nice little simple kind of like a how do you say a diagonal line. Okay, so right here, this is a little bit too much white space. So what I'll do is I'll use my movement tool again. Select the black right here and just make a duplicate of it. Hold Alt, drag it over, or just simply click. Control J, move it over. Very simple, just making copies, right? Just kind of fill that space over there to kind of get rid of that. Now, I can make this a little bit bigger, okay? Like I said before, though, the gray is not working. So what I might do here is I'm gonna say, hey, what if I made this like green as well or black, right? I made that black. If I do that, I have to change the actual follow to stay connected to white and move this over the black so it doesn't have any trouble. And I'll also move the word offline or make the word off one word or one color, make the word line the other color. And now I'm making myself a nice clean looking revamp, not gonna lie, it's looking pretty nice. Here, I'll shrink that a little bit. So stream offline, we have our like little coloring or a simple little white out there. Our swatch is looking actually pretty cool as well, but I'm actually gonna kind of get rid of that so you guys don't see it. But for me, in my understanding, I think this is a pretty good setup to kind of start off with and just kind of go off this vibe right here alone, putting it in the same kind of simple way, putting like stream starting, stream ending, right? Or stream like intermission, right? Now, intermission screens, by the way, very, very simple. What I like to do is make a new layer, make the same marquee tool, select the entire canvas, quick fill any color, which means alt backspace, okay? And if you guys press control T to free transform it, Hold Alt and Shift, make it as small as you guys would think that you guys want your webcam to be or your gameplay that's going on. Press Enter, whichever way you want to like have a small you want to have it, right? Right? And then you can just move this right here, and this will be your template to be like, hey, where your camera's gonna be. Very simple. And for panels, I would suggest you guys to use anything between like uh how do you say when I'm at file new 600 by 150, resolution 300, create. Now, if you don't want it to be this thick, use the crop tool, which is C on your keyboard, and move it down just like so to make it a little more thinner, not so wide, just like so. And you can just kind of take that same as that console you guys had from before over here and just move it over here as well. Type in Twitter, type in Instagram, so people have your panels as well. And with that being said, homies, today's video is actually finally done. I hope you guys had some really cool tips going on. I hope you guys who, who who don't really have the cleanest setups in the universe end up having a really cool clean setup after this. Of course, everybody's gonna do the way I did it. Now, if you, of course, this is where you wanna put some kind of creative effort into it to make it just a little more different, but just keep in mind, of course, people are gonna have this little concept here as well, so you're not gonna be the only one, but hopefully what happens is you guys have a different color scheme, which is always gonna be different, right? Or a different font for your logo or a different uh, look to your logo. So. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video here today. I'll talk to you guys later. Since so HQ out, do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Much love later. If you have not subscribed, please sure to subscribe. All that good stuff. Um, this week is actually COD Champ, so good luck to our freaking uh, COD team. Absolute pleasure to actually be working with you guys. Um, yeah, much love. I'll tell you guys later. If you guys, if I see you at COD Champs, please say hi. Uh, this video is gonna be out by the time it ends anyway. But regardless, if you guys said hi, love you. Talk to you guys later. Peace. Enjoy yourselves.